a KQED HD production. Stillness settles like a blanket of fog on quiet Pillar Point Harbor in Half Moon Bay, California. Only one boat is going out today. Its mission will be to catch fish, not by hook or net, but with cameras. On board the fishing vessel Donna Kathleen, fishermen have been replaced by scientists. And instead of crab traps, a remotely operated submersible sits on the deck. In 1999, the state passed the Marine Life Protection Act and since then has been embarking on establishing a network of marine protected areas up and down the coast. These marine protected areas, or MPAs, restrict fishing in nearly 15% of state waters along California's 1,100-mile coastline. You got that, that closes off a lot of prime fishing spots, but scientists say these controlled areas are needed to allow depleted fish species to recover. I've seen uh, fish populations decrease in my lifetime, which is quite frightening. Dirk Rosen is founder of Marine Applied Research and Exploration and one of the leaders of this expedition. In order to get these populations back up where we want them, we really want places where these boffs, these big old fat fertile females, can reside and grow big and that overall we will start to replenish the surrounding waters. Rosen's Richmond-based nonprofit is partnering with the California Department of Fish and Game, Cal State Monterey Bay, and the Nature Conservancy to survey the deep water areas of the new MPAs. The state, with its foresight, went ahead and set up these marine reserves in five different regions. And there's a lot of pressure uh, people would like to fish there if they fish there historically. And so to be fair, since we're taking away fishable area, we need to monitor and assess if this management technique is working. Instead of just passing rules for a few individual fish species, the state aims to protect entire marine ecosystems from the shallow kelp forest to the depths off the continental shelf. But in order to get a clear idea of how the experiment is working, scientists, fishery managers, and stakeholders need to have a baseline census of what is living there now. And the only way to truly find out about California's undersea world is to go down and look. By studying the marine reserves, the first couple of years they've been designated, we have a point of reference. So five years from now, 10 years from now, we come back and evaluate what's there. We can compare it to this baseline condition. Up until now, the protected areas beyond scuba depth have been a challenge to access. In order to go deeper, the scientists use the remotely operated vehicle, or ROV, named Beagle. So this is the business end of the remotely operated vehicle. This is where we have all of our cameras and sensors and lights. So for example, the pilot uses this camera down here for flying the ROV. In addition, we have a vertical camera and a digital still camera. These are both pointed down. All of the cameras have lasers on them that are spread 10 centimeters apart, so any fish or invertebrate that we tag or hit with those lasers, then we can scale it. We know exactly how big it is. In addition, in areas of poor visibility, we have a sonar. It's what we call a multi-beam sonar, and it gives us a real-time swath image of what's out ahead of us a couple of meters. And these are acoustic tracking beacons. They say, here I am, and we triangulate uh, the ROV's location to the ship uh, position and we know exactly where every frame of video and where every digital still photograph is taken. And that we put into the database. Down. Thrusters and angles. The Beagle zips to the bottom to begin its work. The umbilical provides power to the craft and is also the conduit of real-time information back up to the crew. So 
we're just beginning the cruise. This is our ninth transect. They're all about a kilometer long. And I keep an eye, one eye on that so I can see what's coming as far as terrain. We're about to hit another rock right in front of us there. It's just a little one. The Beagle surveys long, narrow swaths of the sea floor called transects. It flies over the varying underwater terrain both inside and outside the MPAs to study rockfish, sea urchins, and everything else it encounters. Down here in Half Moon Bay, this is probably some of the worst visibility that we we encounter in the state. And yet, there's some really cool stuff down here. The bottom we're in some now is is covered with these giant bowling balls. These they look like granite bowling balls. It's fantastic habitat. When we go out to the Farallons, the visibility was a hundred feet. You could see forever. On board, scientists closely watch the ROV's monitors and capture images in order to create an overall picture of the ocean ecosystem. Transect 0528. This is the downlooking still camera. This is the downlooking video. And then there's the forward-looking video that the pilot is using to fly the ROV. And then here, over here, we have the position of the boat and the ROV relative to the topography on the seafloor. So what we'll be doing is watching for organisms and habitats as they approach. They'll come into this screen and we can snap them. And we'll also be taking regular shots, maybe at one minute intervals, as transect shots to collect quantitative data on the system. And there's a transect shot at 5948. Through this process, a seemingly unlikely partnership has also been created. While some fishermen continue to oppose MPAs, others are working with scientists to share their expertise. Tim Marisich is captain of the Donna Kathleen and has fished these waters for decades. I am allowed to put input in where that data is collected to make sure that the fishing industry recognizes that the scientists are actually concerned. It's a very good partnership. You know, we've had our growing pains and, uh, and trust building. And uh, from the fishing industry side, I think it's, we're proving that we understand the resources. And we want to be able to pass them on to future generations. You know, we're not out to catch the last one. The team will survey this and other spots up and down the coast several times over a two-year span. Based on the researchers' findings, state fishing rules could be rewritten. However, it will take additional surveys over the next decade to see if the MPA concept is truly effective in restoring key species. But the work being done today is building the foundation both for conservation science as well as for future collaborations. And in the process, we are gaining valuable insight into the still mysterious deep. Every single time we go in the water, we find something unanticipated, which is an argument for doing more and more of this, because the reality is that we know more about the surface of the moon than we do about the surface of our own planet. We have started on something really valuable, learning about our ocean resources. So our oceans do a lot more for us than just provide fish. And so I feel like just going out there every day, it's going to teach us a lot more about this planet and how to better take care of it and steward it. So that's what I'm hoping over the next 20 years is that we'll do a much better job in managing our oceans.